All right, so uh, for the modern mosaic that we're making, um, I'm using three eight, three eighths inch thick uh, plywood. I can't remember what type of plywood it was. It's interior. It's not exterior plywood. Um, I don't. I know this isn't the birch that they sell. I got this at at Lowe's. I'm sure you can find it at Home Depot too. And uh, if you're limited on space in your vehicle like I am, you can have them. Uh, cut the, the board in half while you're there. I would recommend getting a whole board because if you go uh, to the aisle where they sell uh, smaller size pieces of plywood, uh, it's way overpriced. So I would just ask them to cut it there and then uh, you'll have some extra for a future project or something like that. Uh, so uh, it's a little rough, so I'm just going to be sanding it down. And then once I sand it down, I'm going to sketch out our or not sketch up, but uh, outline our our wood planks as we're not going to actually be using uh, separate pieces of wood. We're going to be giving the impression that there is several pieces of wood and um, that will save us some troubles later. Uh, if you're not, this is good if you're limited on tools, if you're just not trying to get very in depth uh, on a project, it will save you uh, the gluing and um, if you've never done this before like me then you won't have to worry about like the sturdiness or the dexterity of all of these multiple pieces of wood that are being glued together. Alright, so the, the surface is sanded and I slightly beveled the edges. I'll go back later with a finishing sander and just clean those up. And uh, so our the board is 48 inches wide. Uh, I want my uh, boards to be to look like they are three inches wide each. Uh, three goes into 48, so that'll work fine. Uh, if you want all your boards to be even, just make sure the uh, the, the board section width will uh, divide into the width of your actual board. Um, okay, so I'm gonna mark on the three, six, Thirty-three, thirty-six, thirty-nine, forty-two, forty-five, and then yeah, the last one is, is marked. So I'm gonna do that on both ends, and then I'm going to. So I don't have my ruler here at this house, so I'm going to lay this across and. Um, after I measure the side, mark that side, I'm going to connect the dots and I'll be left with um, vertical sections and then I'm going to go in and just kind of um, make it look like it's varying length uh, boards that make up this whole single sheet of plywood. So now the uh, plywood is divided into sections, just drawn on with pencil right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, just a normal wood burner that you can find at the hardware store, and I'm going to wood burn those lines. And the reason for doing so is not just aesthetic, aesthetic it's also for functionality. So if I were to just try to uh, stain each one of these boards by hand, I uh, probably could do it. It would be really tedious, um, and uh, the edges might not be as clean as I'd like to get them. So if I burn pretty deeply along these lines, it's going to create like a, a trough. Um, an exacto knife would do the same purpose. It doesn't work as well. But um, basically when I would burn this section for example, I would burn this line and then this line. When I stain this 
the stain's going to run through the wood and then it's when it hits that burning it it stops it from crawling into the next space if i don't as long as i don't use excessive amount an excessive amount of stain to where it goes over the top it should just run right up to the edge and then stop and then we'll have uh, clean individual stained boards uh, across this whole piece of plywood Okay, so all of the lines have been burned, um, so now it's time to start the staining. I've already begun the staining. I'm going to be using uh, five different colors. Um, I'll be doing one color at a time, and I'm just trying to uh, estimate um, equal, uh, equal distribution or, or spreading of each color. You know, I don't want the same color right next to each other three times, you know, it needs to be uh, spread out evenly. So that's what's gonna be uh, going on. I'm gonna stain that, and then all that'll be really left uh, is polyurethane. Okay, so the last step for the modern mosaic would be just to add a polyurethane. Uh, for most of the woodworking projects that I do, um, they're all uh, they're all made using interior finish. Uh, and normally, I'll use a wipe on. Since this is so large, I'm actually just going to take this polyurethane and just pour it on here, uh, spread it out, let the excess drip off the sides, wipe off the remaining excess with a cloth, and then bring it back in to dry. And then uh, I'll pro I'm probably will throw a coat on the back as well, it won't be as thick. And then your modern mosaic, uh, pretty much complete. All right, so we polyurethane the modern mosaic. Uh, I've done three coats of poly on the front. I did one coat of poly on the back. This is going to be uh, an interior uh, wall wall hanging, so didn't really need to get too crazy with uh, doing too many coats of polyurethane. Uh, so now the next step would be to attach a hanger onto this, and then um, we'll be hanging it up on the wall, and that's pretty much it. I'm using D-rings and uh, hanging wire, that's pretty much it. So the way I go about placing my D-rings is I'll find the height of uh, whatever I'm hanging and then I will put a mark a third of the way down the measurement. So this is 48 inches. So 48 divided by 3 would be 1, 6, so 16. So I'm going to find my 16 inch mark and then just put a mark on it. 16 inches. So that's a third of the way down. I'm going to do the same on the other side. drill holes, attach the D-rings, and then attach the wire. All right, so I wanted to use some larger D-rings. It looks like I don't have any. Uh, I got some of these smaller D-rings. Um, so when you're selecting the size bit to drill your hole, just make sure that it's slightly smaller than your actual screw. You want the teeth to be able to bite it when, um, when it's getting drilled into the wood. So my screws are a little too long for the thickness of this board. If I were to just drill them straight in as is, 
they come out the other side and uh, essentially on some level ruin what we've been uh, what we just built so I'm going to cut about a, a quarter inch off of those um, I don't, the angle grinders not here someone else has it so I'm just gonna cut it with a metal handsaw just do what I have to do to get it done and then I'm going to uh, drill some holes sink the D-rings and attach the wire and uh, I'll show you how I attach my wire and if you just as a side note if you do go all the way through your board there's a trick that I learned recently and really it would only work with smaller size holes but I was working on a project recently where I needed to fill in a hole that I had previously drilled and uh, instead of just making a wood filler and then fill it in with wood filler I was able to take a toothpick twist it push down into the wood and break it off in there and kind of sand it back a little bit and it worked perfectly cut these off and then drill slightly into this wood just to get the hole started so now I'm just going to use a uh, screwdriver to set these D-rings in You can find these at uh, Walmart, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, this is a D ring, and the probably can tell there's a flat side, and then the top is it's not flat. It's got this uh, this curve right here. My camera would adjust. Anyways, just make sure the, the flat side is facing down. Anyways, through the D-ring. Looping it around. And then just keep doing that all the way up. And then you, another extra step, something you don't really need to do that I like to do is I like to cover this with artist tape. That's kind of like electrical tape. Uh, anyway, I like to cover this uh, metal wire so it doesn't poke or scratch the body. Cut off the excess 